My fellow Lagosians, good morning. Today, the 29th of May 2023, marks one year since the government has been sworn in. During the swearing in of Bola Ahmed Tinubu, he declared subsidy removed, with no specific strategies to manage this huge declaration. This sudden announcement skyrocketed the price of fuel and also the cost of goods and services across every sector. This led to various announcements of palliatives, with over 500 billion naira budgeted to be able to reduce this hardship on the people. These funds were neither spent transparently, and coincidentally, the people that have been put in charge to manage humanitarian affairs, to tackle multidimensional poverty that Nigerians are faced with, were also indicted for corruption. It's very unfortunate that in the last 12 months, Nigerians have endured the most regressive and incompetent civilian administration this country has ever witnessed. Most children are going to bed hungry because food inflation is currently at 40%. The price of cooking gas has risen by 41%. And close to a thousand local manufacturing businesses have shut down, with at least several multinational having exited the country latest being Microsoft. Now the question is, how will the Nigerian citizen survive when the price of diesel is up by 58%, electricity is up by nearly 100%, petrol by 192%, higher taxes and insecurity is what the Goshans Nigerians are having to deal with, intercity transportation is up by 49% and interstate transportation is up by 78%. This means that in our country, with 35,000 naira as a minimum wage, we can't afford to buy a full tank of fuel or a bag of rice for your day-to-day -day living. Millions of Nigerians are crumbling under the weight of this government's incompetence. And it's not just businesses that are dying out. Thousands of innocent citizens too are paying the price for this incompetence. In the last 12 months, at least 7,828 people have died from violent attacks with no resolution in sight. And it, it, it hurts me to think about the fact that the Nigerians are the ones bearing the brunt of this government's incompetence. Meanwhile, members of this government are spending obscene amounts of money buying foreign cars, renovating their lodges and their residences, budgeting funds for monies that have no business being in the budget considering the current state of the economy. So I have one question for the leadership of this country right now. Aside from junketeering across the globe without making any impact at COPPA or appointing poor performing ministers, meddling in state affairs, flip-flopping on policies and consistently using propaganda to sell accomplishments that were never made, subsidizing pilgrimages, literally nearly starting a war with Niger and the entire um, Sahel um, block of, of states, of countries, lying about the Port Harcourt refinery, lying about flights being able to go into Dubai, Nigerians being able to go into Dubai, lying about attracting investments, restricting press freedom, worsening unemployment and increasing poverty, what are you celebrating with one year that you spent in government? What have you really achieved? In Lagos, this is what our government should have done differently. We would have cut public transportation by more than 50%. We would have reduced consumption taxes by 50%. We will subsidize prescription drugs to ensure that people are not going to be vulnerable based with this inflation and high price and price hikes that have followed with the fall in the value of our currency. We will make massive investments in social housing as opposed to becoming a demolition government. We will extend vouchers and energy subsidies to food transporters who bring food into Lagos to incentivize them to bring in food at lower prices. We will launch a 5 billion naira investment business intervention. This fund will be able to provide grants and cheaper capital for small and medium enterprises, considering that currently interest rates are 26%. We we'll improve local security by deploying technology, 
drones, lighting up Lagos, creating an informal means of gathering information, retraining and equipping our neighborhood watch, the officers and the local vigilante groups bring them into a structured means of surveillance and will improve our collaboration with the police. We we'll ensure that with these safety measures, we we'll encourage a 24 hour economy. All the above listed are low hanging fruits that a state like Lagos would have been able to benefit from and ensure that over 24 years that this current government has been in power are fruits that it should have plucked a long time ago. Unfortunately, this is where we are. After one year in office, no serious administration should be talking more about what it tends to do without first showcasing what it has achieved. But this shouldn't surprise anyone. This current government did not campaign to serve you. They did not engage the populace to let them know how their lives will be better. So it should come as no surprise that their budgeting and policies don't reflect empathy that shows that they understand the distress that Nigerians are living through. Currently, most families eat once a day or even maximum twice a day according to the Save Children Foundation. About 15 million children are starving. This means that one in six children are starving in Nigeria. According to UNICEF, about 25 million Nigerians are undernourished. And according to WFP, 26.5 million Nigerians are projected to face acute hunger in June, between June and August 2024. I personally find these data points to be underreported and a sign of grave danger ahead. Things are not looking good at all and it seems there is no end in sight. So now is the time to rally around each other to support the needy and uplift the weak. We must resist their attempt to break our spirit and impoverish us. I must hold fast to the conviction that a new Nigeria that works for all of us a Lagos that works for everyone, our Lagos, is indeed possible. God bless you, Lagosians. God bless you, Nigerians. Stay strong.